Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to continue our countdown of my 30 favorite albums of the year 2002. So if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check that out. I talk a little bit about 911 and some of the things that influenced this year, but here we are finishing the top 15 albums, 15 through one. So let me go ahead and pull up this spreadsheet and we'll talk about number 15. Now this is a band from San Francisco and we're gonna have a lot of Californians on this list. I don't know why, but 2002 was just filled with a lot of great musicians from the California area. And I loved their debut just uh, adored their their debut and some people don't like this band but it's the uh, Counting Crows and their album Hard Candy so aside from maybe one track that's uh, you know they did a cover of Joni Mitchell's Big Yellow Taxi a duet with Vanessa Carlton a lot of people don't like that song and I admit it's just okay it's a fair song but man all the originals on here are really good and this is uh, this is a great Counting Crows album, probably the last album that they did that I truly loved, though there was one called uh, Saturday Nights and Sunday Mornings, I think it was called. That's a pretty good album, too. Uh, but yeah, Hard Candy, and I, I don't know if there were any hits off here, really, that I can think of off the top of my head, but it's just a consistently good album. A lot of songs about girls. Uh, uh, what's his name? Adam Duritz. Is that the lead singer? He loves to sing. <laughs> he loves to sing about girls. Uh, but it's just, you know, the band's in top form and he's singing really well. And I really enjoy this album, Hard Candy by The Counting Crows. Coming in at number 14 is a debut album from a Brooklyn artist. And this is LP. Yeah, his album, Fantastic Damage. Man, sonically, this is beautiful. And he just did, let's see, I was looking at, he didn't use Pro Tools much. He said he used uh, turntables, samplers, a chaos pad, and uh, synthesizers. But great debut rap album from LP. This is uh, the second of three rap albums on my list. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's got a good cadence and is a great... I, I think he's brilliant sonically. He really lays down a good uh, sonic pad for his uh, rap vocals, and the lyrics are always interesting. Uh, a little bit street, uh, but really good stuff. Uh, honest and hard-hitting, but not too uh, ridiculous. Um, love this. Coming in at number 13 is a band from Austin, Texas that you guys might know that I like, Spoon, Kill the Moonlight. It's probably my favorite Spoon album. It's terrific. Uh, the Way We Get By and some really, really good melodies. And Brett Daniels is one of my favorite singers. Love Kill the Moonlight. Uh, I've liked this album since it came out. So some of the things on my list here are things that I discovered later through the years. But Kill the Moonlight is an album I was listening to in 2002 and 20 years later it still remains one of my favorite albums. Very tuneful, uh, like I say, great singing, great playing, love that drum kit. Um, one of the catchiest bands, I don't know, I just find myself singing along with them. Kill the Moonlight by Spoon, terrific album. Coming in at number 12 is the final of my three rap albums. And this is uh, a band you know from television, from Philadelphia, but this is The Roots, Phrenology. Oh, the, uh, what is that song called? The Seed 2.0? Mm, mm, really good stuff. Uh, I noticed that Black Thought has a new album out this year with Danger Mouse, and I'll probably find something to hit up from that and react to it. But 20 years ago was The Roots Phrenology. A lot of great guest artists on here. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I love, I love the sound of The Roots and I love their cadence. So terrific, terrific stuff. Coming in at number 11 
is an anthology, and this will be the last anthology on my list, so the top ten will all be original material. But there was a band formed in 1979 out of Southern California, a four-piece with two brothers uh, in the lead, and this was the Blasters. You may not know the Blasters, but they do uh, a searing uh, version of Roots Rock, and their songs like Marie Marie and Border Radio, which is a song about Wolfman Jack and blasting 50,000 watts out of Mexico. Uh, back in the day, you could build a radio station over the border and blast it through half the United States, and just fun, fun songs. American Music is the title of another song. If you don't know the Blasters, they were on a label called uh, Slash, and this is called Testament, the complete Slash recordings. And I actually own this. I was going to bring it out here and show it to you guys, but uh, wonderful melodic rock and roll. Like I say, it's based in 50s rock and roll, but it was updated for the 80s. And they are one of the most fun bands you'll listen to. Um, I've seen one of the brothers in concert. I saw Dave Alvin. And he later uh, went on to uh, also join the band X out of Los Angeles, so another slash band. And I love the Blasters, uh, can't get enough of them. All right, here we are in the top 10, all original albums. Coming in at number 10 from Virginia, her third album, Nico Case, Blacklisted. This is a really interesting version of Americana. It's not traditional. Uh, it's not straight up Americana, it's just Americana influenced. And she's a terrific singer. She also sings for the band The New Pornographers. And uh, this got a lot of attention. This is another album I've been listening to for 20 years. I remember my wife, my former wife, bought this uh, album and brought it home and played it. And I, I just loved it. We, we both enjoyed listening to it, played it several times. Blacklisted by Nico Case. Um, a little bit of darkness on here, just a touch of it, uh, and then a lot of reverb on her voice, great production, and it just puts you in a mood. Uh, half Americana and half almost, almost gothic in a way. It's sort of a gothic Americana hybrid. Wonderful stuff. If you haven't checked out Nico Case's Blacklisted, highly recommended. I said The Roots was the last of my rap albums on here. I guess I lied because I see another one on here. Uh, British rap. Mike Skinner from Birmingham. This is The Streets, original pirate material. And I remember when I bought this uh, album on CD and I popped it in the car and listened to it. And I remember my wife and stepson were like, eh, you know. But I was right. Original pirate material. It's held up pretty well over 20 years. And this was probably my first introduction to any kind of rap music from England. Uh, Geezers Need Excitement, that's one of the songs on here. And, you know, sonically, this is just so beautiful because he pulls uh, the samples that he does on here are a lot of R&B material and so forth, but then that, that uh, strong, strong uh, British cadence on here. I love Mike Skinner and Original Pirate Material by The Streets, terrific, terrific album. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with it. Coming at number eight from Oklahoma, a semi-concept uh, semi album, and I did a feature on Master Monday on one of the songs from here. This is The Flaming Lips, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. First four songs are thematic and then the rest of the songs are not really related to the theme of the album, but really fun and a lot of thumping uh, bass and awesome stuff. I guess they were having a hard time recording this album because the drummer was going through heroin withdrawal, but man, they made a fun album. And uh, there's one song that's an instrumental and it's just a battle. It's just them battling with instruments. Kind of reminds me of what the progressive band Yes used to do on albums like Relay or they would have these wars where they would try to uh, try to bring up the imagery of a battle scene and they would just do it with all their instruments and they, the instruments would fight each other and kind of have this cacophony and 
the lips do this too but then they have really sweet songs like do you realize uh, about mortality and yeah I love this album all right we're back to California from Pomona California coming in at number seven uh, the veteran Tom Waits I'm a huge Tom Waits fan he released two albums on the same day so I'm counting them as separate albums and this one is blood money and this has wonderful songs like God's Away on Business. Oh, I love this song. Everybody row, everybody row. <laughs> and uh, it was a good song for me to listen to during the pandemic. It just really hit the spot. I did this uh, pandemic playlist of songs about wh what was going on with the virus. And God's Away on Business was a perfect song for that playlist. Uh, Tom Waits. And one thing I want to say about him that... Uh, someone that doesn't get a lot of credit but every song on here was co-written with his wife Kathleen Brennan so if you think Tom Waits is a bit of a weird cat well remember that his wife must be a weird cat too she's uh, born and raised in Ireland and apparently she's got the same sense of humor as him and they co-wrote this group of songs and it's just wonderful this um, Pitchfork gave this a 9.0, which is the equivalent of four and a half stars. A, a really highly respected album, Blood Money by Tom Waits. Coming in at number six, the noise rock band from New York City, Sonic Youth, Murray Street. And I did a whole series on uh, Sonic Youth. Uh, love Murray Street. It's not my favorite album of theirs, but probably top five. Ugh. Oh. And this was recorded right after 911, and they named it after their studio, which was right by the World Trade Center, Murray Street. Um, that studio that they rented there, uh, they didn't go in there for months, and when they finally went in there, they had to have it professionally cleaned. There was so much dust and debris that had leaked in through the studio, and they had to refurbish the studio, and then they recorded this album, and it has you know a bit of a gloomy feel to it because of what was going on in New York it kind of bleeds into the aesthetic of this album uh, but wonderful album if you want to know more about it check out my legacy series on Sonic Youth uh, Murray Street great album album cover by the way too a picture of uh, their kids all right now we're into the top five and again these are all original no compilations or anthologies here Number five, back to Tom Waits again. The other album that he released on the same day called Alice. And this has got some beautiful songs like Flower's Grave, which is who will put a flower on a flower's grave. Uh, just gorgeous stuff. And then really weird stuff like Tabletop Joe, which is a song about a guy with only a head and hands. He has no body. And he dances on this table for entertainment. Well, I don't know how he dances without feet, but... You can listen to the song and figure it out. But it's really fun, and uh, this also got a 9.0 on Pitchfork, and I don't know, Tom Waits' Alice, I prefer it two places ahead of Blood Money, but for this guy to put out two albums on the same day that would make my top 10, terrific. Uh, check out Alice, it's a wonderful song. Tom Waits has continued to do really good music in the 21st century, but then, he put out an album in 2011 and he has not recorded since. He's been on an 11 year hiatus. So apparently he's retired without really announcing. So sorry about the ambient noise here. All right, number four from um, the Los Angeles area. Uh, we have Queens of the Stone Age, Songs for the Deaf. And this is the album that uh, is radio themed they have little snippets of radio that play in between the songs including some spanish radio and then dave grohl is the guest drummer on this album oh this crunches no one knows god is on the radio these are hard rocking songs i love queens of the stone age never got a chance to see them uh terrific band um uh, oh. And th this is my favorite album. Some people like Rated X and some of their other albums, but Songs for the Deaf, absolutely my favorite Queens of the Stone Age and a good enough album to come in at number four. 
Uh, I think you guys probably know enough about them that I can't really add much more. Most people have heard this album. I also listened to this in 2002 when it came out and I've been enjoying it for 20 years. It has remained one of my favorite albums of the year. All right, now we're into the top three. What's it going to be? Well, we got uh, three different regions. So the first one, we're going to look at Northern UK, Robert Plant. So I'm a big fan of his 21st century work, and it starts with this album, Dreamland. This is when he started working with a, a group called the uh, Strange Sensation Band. Boy, this really, um, you know, the thing about his 80s and 90s recordings is they're okay, but they're not that great. And then in 2002, he just took off like a rocket. And every album he's done since 2002 has been terrific. Dreamland is about half covers and about half originals. And some of the originals are quasi-originals because they draw from the blues. So there's songs like uh, My Train Fair Home that are really steeped in um, a lot of blues music. And then he does a cover of Song to the Siren by Jeff Buckley, or no, I'm sorry, by um, Tim Buckley, uh, Jeff Buckley's father, sorry about that. And uh, Hey Joe, the song that The Leaves and later Jimi Hendrix made famous. and a Bob Dylan cover, One More Cup of Coffee, and I don't know, sonically, it's just a gorgeous album. It's really well produced. Uh, love the son yeah, I say, just, I love this album sonically, just, even if I don't listen to what he's singing about, just the sound of the album with the melodies alone, well, then you put in his singing and the lyrics, and you get a top-notch album from the former Led Zeppelin singer, Robert Plant, who's really trying to stay uh, vibrant and vital and relevant in the 21st century. I think he's done a good job. Coming in number two, I think this album will surprise you guys. I think you didn't see this one coming at all. An album that got pretty good reviews but split the critics a little bit. This is Beck, Sea Change. And this is his serious album. So after making all these really fun albums that were that had a great wicked sense of humor and uh, you know you had Loser and uh, Two Turntables and a Microphone he turned around and wrote this breakup album they're all songs about failed relationships with uh, these beautiful string arrangements oh I just there's four or five tracks on this album that just they're so moving and so honest uh, I'm trying to think of the names of the songs off the top of my head. Uh, well, the first song is called Golden Age, and that's wonderful. And then it just moves on from there. Uh, beautiful songs. Uh, might be a little front-loaded. The front half of the album is a little bit better than the last half. But I love Sea Change by Beck. And if you haven't heard this album, yeah, he's a good singer. You know, I think he's an underrated singer. So what's it going to be at number one? Well... You might have predicted it. There goes a motorcycle. Uh, it's a noisy town here. So number one is from Chicago, Wilco, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Yeah, love this album. Pitchfork gave it a 10.0, five stars. All Music gave it five stars. Rate Your Music had it as their 14th highest album, including compilations. This was universally acclaimed and for good reason. Great lyrics, great singing by Jeff Tweedy. Uh, Jim O'Rourke came in to do some final production on the album and he adds a little bit of guitar. And There's all these interesting instruments on it. One song, the opening song, has toy piano on it. And then he uses some shortwave radio static on other songs. And That's not what makes it a great album, but it is sonically very interesting. And then his lyrics are just they're a little bit skeletal, so you can kind of pop in your own meaning uh, to them. They're not necessarily overly descriptive. I like those kind of lyrics. Um, you know, the opening song, I think, says, I'm, I'm an aquarium drinker. What the heck's he mean by that? I guess he means he drinks like a fish, right? So just clever lyrics from uh, Jeff Tweedy, love, love him. Um, I like the entire Wilco catalog in the 21st century, but this one is my favorite album by Wilco. 
it's most people's favorite album and for good 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 reason you have Jesus etc and camera and heavy metal drummer and man uh, I'm trying to break your heart uh, great songs on here so that's my number one Yankee Hotel Foxtrot let me know what your favorite albums are I love reading your comments and if you like what we're doing here, a senior citizen discussing the 21st century, the new music, it's a flip of the usual reaction channel model that you normally see, which is normally a young person looking at classic rock. And I just turned that model upside down on its head. Hit that like or subscribe button. It really helps. It helps the channel grow. And uh, as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.